Hey everyone, so Plasticity 2025.3 just launched and yeah, Nick Allen, the creator of the uh, Plasticity just uploaded also a video as he always does when like a new update comes out where he just um, yeah explains a little bit. And I just wanted to make kind of a reaction video where we just watch it kind of together. So I just skipped through a little bit. So we watch it live together and I will just share some thoughts. And I saw that in the beginning is just the intro. So we will just watch it. I will not uh, not comment and then he will just explain a few features. So let's dive in. This one will be a big one. Life symmetry. Let's see. Hey everybody, Plasticity 2025.3 is here. There's a few killer new features that I'm really excited to share with you today. Okay. So let me get started by looking at the new instance functionality. Well, let's make it like So what is an instance? An instance is a virtual copy of an object that is linked to the original. So there's a couple new commands. For example, the create instance and realize instance commands. Well, I'm going to run create instance on this screw detail. And what it allows me to do is it creates a duplicate of this body, but the duplicate is linked such that if I edit the original, oh, that's so helpful. The, um, I will the duplicate will always I will say a few things in a second. be updated simultaneously. Now, this can be really useful for repetitive details. Let me make a radial array um, of this screw detail. And you'll notice that the curve array, radial array, and rectangular array commands now have this make instance option so that when I create them... Oh, that's very helpful because very often, so especially when you do like this curve, or like radial array stuff. It's just like little details that you add to any kind of object, right? And most of the time you have to edit them or add some fillets or something like that. So usually now, so before the update, you would have to select all of those edges and fillet them. Or if you want to, would change, uh, would want to change the, yeah, like the size of the screw in the inside or something, you would literally have to delete everything or go like one by one. So this is like super, super helpful. Not that we just have instances now. So he will also explain a few things, but also that it's instantly like implemented into the radial array and curve array uh, command. So array yeah, that's really nice. Make instance option. Just so make sure everything them, faster. All of these guys will be linked together. Now they can all be updated simultaneously. Now what I just showed you is instancing an individual solid. But one of the key features of instances in Plasticity is that you can instantiate not just solids and curves and sheets, but also groups. So for example, if I take these bodies, so the original and these uh, nine other instances that I created, um, if I put them in a group, and now with the group selected, I run the create instance command. Mm. Now I have this, mm. uh, this single object, this single object that, that we can manipulate as one. Well, oh, that's also so helpful because like very often times when you do something, I don't know, nothing comes to my mind, but you work on a project and you use a lot of those array stuff, then you have all of those weird arrays in your outliner here on the left. And then you have like 5 million objects and then you have to look for them and, and always select one and then scroll down and shift select, you know, or that, I don't know, like, this makes just everything so much more like simple, even more intuitive. And it's just much more comfortable, you know, and, and you just have, because like, I also love to organize everything like in the outliner, like in this menu on the left. I hate it when it's like a lot of stuff inside there, you know, because yeah, then you have to scroll and, and look for that. And now you can just put it in groups and they also act like instances. So and make as many very nice. as we want, including, for example, with rectangular array and so hmm. forth. So without getting into too much stuff, the first thing I want to show you is just as you're when moving bodies around in plasticity, you can set a custom pivot. So here I'm going to set a custom pivot for this instance. And then I'm just going to, I don't know, we'll put this here, this detail here. I don't need this. 
we'll duplicate this, we'll duplicate here, and we'll duplicate here. And now, anytime we edit our original body, all of these are updated simultaneously. Okay, so working, okay. so you can instance a body, you can instance a group. Let me show why working with groups is kind of the preferred way and the more powerful way to work with instances in plasticity. Now, if I, I'm just gonna delete these real quick and let me hide this group. And I'm just gonna cut everything in two along sort of the Y plane. I'll delete this half of the bodies. Now, hmm. I'm gonna take all these bodies and I'm gonna put them in a group. So everything is in group two. Now, I'm gonna make an instance of this group, create instance. And here I can either run the mirror command or scale this instance by negative one on Y, which is kind of my preferred way of doing it. And what this allows me to do is this entire half of the body, or this entire- Oh, so just something very interesting. I think a lot of people don't know that. Or oh, I also just understood it. So you can cut something in half. And if you scale that in minus one, then you're kind of mirroring that. So if it's like then an instance and now, so for example, he should be able, so if he takes, for example, like a face or whatever from this object on the right, and he starts to edit that or extrude it because it's scaled, like just on the minus one, it should exactly be on the, then on the other side, you know? So yeah, it's just this see. virtualized object of all of these guys that edit in real time, yeah. right? And so as I oh, make yeah. changes, and yeah, both nice. sides of the object are updated simultaneously. Okay, so I've set up a sim. It's kind of the mirror, but not really. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, okay. Let's situation see. just to reinforce the basic idea. I have a couple sheet bodies in this group, and then I created an instance of the group and mirrored it along the X axis. Now you can sculpt, sculpt the CVs and update the bodies in real time. And when- Okay, so this must be then like the new updated mirror, right? So because right now he-, he... The CVs and update the body. Yeah, yeah that's so, oh man, that's so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> like really because like right now anything what he does like on one side it will be automatically adjusted on the left side so on the other side so it will be mirrored in life because what we always did before so in all of my tutorials before so i have to delete them no i'm joking i mean you can still do it um but now you you literally just have we don't have to mirror things all the time over so i mean it, it's not a problem right uh, because we can also just work on one half but now just the cool thing is about like live mirroring is that you just see the whole object directly, you know? And for example, if you model like whatever, like uh, so many products, like all of my previous tutorials, right? Mostly we use like symmetrical objects and usually we have been just working on one half. And, but now you will see also directly the other half, you know? It's just like a nice visual representation thing. And yeah, so we have to see, so I will just explore it also in the next videos, like more into detail how that exactly works. But yeah, it should just be much more like comfortable and just much more so visually appealing and stuff, you know, just very helpful. So like, I'm very looking forward to that. In real time. And when you eventually want things not to be mirrored, but real objects that you can edit, you can run the realized instances nice. command, which will convert these to real bodies that- Or oh, that's- very nice, in but I'm not sure that here it looks like on the right there are more CVs than on the. But okay, it's maybe because of the perspective. So I, I, I very, I think that when you realize those instances, that they those will be exactly the same as like the original ones. But that's nice, you know, because that would be also like my questions. Like, what if we? want to start, for example, in the beginning work like uh, symmetrical or, for example, you want to build like a spaceship, right? Or like a helmet, mask design, whatever. And you want first start with like, like uh, to build it symmetrical, right? So you get this main form and shape symmetrical. But then what if you want to add like on the left one type of detail and then on the right side another type of de detail, right? So this also fixes that. So you just build what you want in with the symmetrical mirror thing. And then when you're finished, when you're ha happy with that, then you can just realize the instance. And then you have the original geometry. So super nice, you know? Independently, and of course, I don't know, Loft, for example. Um, if you were making a beautiful car body and I had a little more talent, you would see that now. 
Okay, next cool new feature. Now, no. it's been a couple years that Plasticity has had this feature where you can edit the edges of planar faces, and it's kind of an unusual feature in a CAD program, but it can be very useful during the blockout phase of getting basic shapes of objects down. But it's been quite limited in that it only works for planar faces. And part of the motivation for that is mm. we don't yeah, really want true. arbitrary edge editing if that's going to lead to weird, difficult work with spline. Oh, services. yeah, what he just did, right? I just realized that. So... He just... Okay, next cool new feature. Now, it's been a couple years that Plasticity has had this feature where you can edit the edges of planar faces, okay, and it's right. kind of an unusual feature in a CAD program, but it can be... Exactly. So this is pretty much like polygon polygonal modeling, where you can just select like an edge and then play with it around. And that was possible with Plasticity, but very useful during something is new. Of getting basic shapes of objects down. But it's been quite limited. But exactly. It was always working like with very basic, like straight like edges and shapes, so and it only see. works for planar faces. And part of the motivation for that is we don't really want arbitrary edge editing if that's going to lead to weird, difficult work with spline surfaces. We want to try and preserve analytic surfaces to the extent possible. So we've introduced a new feature which allows working with conical surfaces and cylindrical surfaces and so forth. Any kind of circular edge mm. can now be transformed, and you can use that in ways to create, you know, cool new blockouts of shapes. This is also an alternative to using the draft <coughs> command when you're working with conical or cylindrical faces. And yeah, this can be very cool and used in creative ways to really dial in shapes and adds a lot of flexibility to the direct editing capability, capabilities of plasticity. So now that we have a... Okay, so the thing is, I never used it. I never used it because I'm not, I'm not like a concept artist in plasticity, right? But I know a lot of guys like that using that in that form i'm like more precision and surface modeling and like products and, and stuff but still this is like very nice when you do like specifically specifically direct modeling so it's like very different from from what i teach in all of my courses uh, and tutorials i do surface modeling right so direct modeling is like very different but like especially for like concepting that's super powerful especially when it comes like to all this sci-fi mech robots design and because this is the beauty usually of polygon modeling when you can form like directly the polygons and 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 it's just much more fluid kind of and cat is usually not that fluid at all right it's like very precision and like like not so creative kind of i would say you know but now with this kind of, if you can now adjust here the circular shapes, you can drag the faces and, and, and edges. So especially for you, if you're interested in all this kind of concept, sci-fi, like whatever, that Beautiful could help you a lot. Of art showcasing my incredible 3D modeling skills. I'm going to show another awesome new feature that took a hell of a long time to implement. Um, so what... Plasticity now has the ability to share documents on the web. So it is disabled by default because we want users to not accidentally leak intellectual property or whatever. So if you go into the preferences of Plasticity and you go into web publishing, you can turn it on or off. It's off by default, like I said. And then once it's on, you can run the publish to Plasticity share That's command. so nice. You'll get a little warning about how much data it is. Because this is the web, it is important to try and keep document sizes small so they download quickly and on mobile. OK, so I am comfortable publishing this. And I click yes. And a few seconds later, the this document opens so up in, in the Plasticity web viewer. So I'm in Safari right now. And basically, every the whole state of my viewport has been uploaded to the web. This is a cryptographically randomly generated URL with 256 bits of entropy. And so these URLs are basically unguessable. Yeah, and so and you can, but they're not password protected. You can share them with people. And it's you know hard for people to discover them. But what's cool is this is almost the entire like viewer experience of Plasticity. You can... Right, we're looking at a web browser right now. You can change the matcap. You can uh, you can turn on and off edges. We can look at zebra stripes. Kind of doesn't make sense for a model like this. Um, yeah, all sorts of functionality. We can do a draft analysis, for example. We can do these kind of like um, isolines and so on and so forth. So it's really cool. I think this will be really fun to share with uh, for you to show off. Yeah. So look, the thing is, like, the, 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 this is so amazing, and it was already <clears throat> available kind of in beta. So we knew that already, and I also tried that and used that, but not so much. But the, the 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 amazing thing is, it works so fast, you know, and also you can just share like a whole car model with thousands of details with with this link, and you can just copy and paste that and show that someone, and it almost immediately loads that completely with all of the details and everything, and you can rotate and look around. And that's so powerful. So first of all, so especially if you're kind of a freelancer or uh, 
doing some kind of professional work with that, right? Just you can just send it to clients, and they can just check it out on by on their own, and you don't have to record videos. You don't have to do I don't know like. Uh, uh, Google meeting with screen share and all that garbage, you know, you can just share the link so they can just check that out. Do they like it? Then, okay, then you continue with the work that you have to do. If not, they can also instantly say that can also make on their own screen, uh, screenshots and maybe add like some notes or something. Oh, that's so nice. But also I, I will use that. So I just had too much stuff to do, but I have like all of those courses, right? Like helmet, car, uh, the, the motorcycle power tools, right? So I have implemented the 3D version on my website, but now I can just check, like set, um, like publish the link so everyone who's like, for example, interested in the course can just check out the original model from the course. So, you know, it's like, it's super nice, super helpful, and it just works so, so fast. So, so you can try that. Um, yeah, just uh, copy this uh, this link, right? So uh, uh, you have to use the command uh, publish to, uh, to web and you just open it and it just instantly works. And this is the most amazing thing about like Nick Kellen and plasticity, like everything, what he is doing, it just works. You know, it's, 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 I don't know, like everything just all the time just works as it should. Everything is extremely fast. So I think he's like super perfectionistic and like very high skilled, like technical. And I don't know, because there are like so many other software there. I don't know, like nothing works as it should or it's buggy or it's slow. I hate that, you know, and plasticity, like it just works everything. Your cool models either privately with a client of yours and you only share the URL with one person or you can post this to Twitter and share with a million people. Um, all of your- Oh yeah, exactly. So, oh, that's also a nice thing. So if you have social media, if you're an artist or designer or whatever, and you have like, yeah, social media, Twitter, Instagram, you can also just post those links and then people cannot just watch photos or like images, but they can feel it on their own, you know, and, and see that. So also very nice for, for those normal people. plasticity key bindings. Uh, basically work so you can snap to orthographic views while holding down alt, for example. Um, you can frame the view with, you know, the standard slash key bindings. All, everything basically works just like plasticity. So it's pretty cool. And give it a try and show me all the cool things you're modeling in plasticity. Share the URLs in our Discord and, and yes, uh, get accolades and become famous and rich and so, have fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, before you click away, if you want to check out plasticity and you want to save 10%, so if you go to Plasticity XYZ, right, you can go on buy, pick like any license that you want and type in Nikita. So yeah, just that comes to my mind. You can save 10%, but also we will explore in the next videos. And obviously I will use all of those new features. So especially um, like the live mirror uh, command. And yeah, we will do some really nice tutorials and everything. And I will also check that out. So as always, I will just give you kind of the best ways and workflows how to use that. Uh, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss those videos and wish you a lot of fun. See you, bye.